here's Brody Brazil. In this video, it's all about your personal pilot possessions. That's right. 10 things I like to keep in my flight bag. By the way, this is actually the bag I use. It's from Brightline Bags. Tremendous product. Well-built, durable, tons of different pockets with the color coordination there on the tags. So you can kind of remember where exactly you keep things. And I do like smaller pockets for things like keys, sunglasses, everything you need. And obviously all the space inside for your headset, your kneeboard, and your iPad. So I highly recommend this bag. Now let's talk about what I put in it. 10 different things here, and there are some others, but these are the most important. A flashlight. Now, I prefer one that is USB chargeable so that if batteries are not an option, depending on where I'm at, I can perhaps plug it into a USB power bank. But also a flashlight that has beam intensity settings. If I don't have to turn this thing on at full blast, considering night flying and pre-flights and everything else, I would prefer to have one that, that allows me to adjust the intensity. And the one I use here is from the brand Phoenix. It goes up to like a thousand lumens, which is great if I really need it, but it also has a very, very dim setting too for everything I'd want in nighttime operations. But that flashlight is not what I would use in the cockpit flying the airplane. For that, I have a whole separate headlamp here. It comes from the company Black Diamond. I believe it's the Storm model. Yeah, it's waterproof, weatherproof, all that stuff. But the most important part is that it, again, allows me to adjust, adjust the intensity of the lighting. It also does different colors. So if I want to go red for night flying, and I can adjust the uh, intensity on that too, or green or blue, but obviously it helps my eyes stay adjusted at nighttime. This one is not USB chargeable, but there are some others out there, uh, which I would highly recommend. But a headlamp is fantastic. When you think about night flying, with a flashlight, if that's really what, what your only option is, that's fine. But optimally, so nice to put something on your head. It lights whatever you're looking at, and it keeps your hands free. Let's move on here to the fuel strainer. Now, that's probably something that every airplane has in it. Until you get to the airplane that you're flying, if you're renting or working at a flight school, and it doesn't have the fuel strainer. Always keep your own. This is such an imperative part of flying, is checking the quality of the fuel, making sure there's no water or sediments or anything else that's not supposed to be in there, in there, um, that you can quickly identify that. A lot of these come, by the way, with that screwdriver option. I use the Jepson version of this. Uh, I've honestly never used the screwdriver once. I mean, I have used a screwdriver to tighten up some screws on the cowling here and there, but not this one. I, I don't know why. I, I could do without the strainer, uh, the strainers that have screwdrivers on them. Okay, up next, pretty much everybody has a headset. I highly recommend something with active noise reduction. That's the ANR. Now, full disclosure here, for so many years, I was a David Clark guy. I love their products. They're well built. I mean, you could do anything to them. They still work. They are magnificent. I never had a single problem. However... In the last couple of years, I did upgrade to a Bose A20. And I have to say the Bluetooth options on this, the sound quality on this, uh, you know, it's not all about listening to your music while you're flying. But if that that is of interest to you, as well as making phone calls, as well as Bluetoothing into your iPad if you're running for flight, then this is likely a great product for you. The A20, I highly recommend it. And I have used, like I said, David Clark's, I've used light speeds over the years, um, but these are now the primary ones that I really, really like. So you got to have yourself a headset. Equally important to that, you got to have Six Sacks. Now, this is an actual brand. I guess I spelled it wrong. I used the K. Um, but this Six Sack or this kind, I keep in my, my kneeboard pretty much still to this day. And it's not because I'm going to be needing it. You just never know who you're flying with and what the situations may bring. During my time as a flight instructor, I handed these out at least five times, and I believe they were used all five of those times. And just think about what this could save you in terms of time and disgust of cleaning up the inside of an airplane when somebody got sick. Yeah, I don't want to get too graphic or go into too much more detail, but please, this is such a small, lightweight item Keep one of these in your bag 
at all times. This is a pro move. You never know when you're going to need one or who's going to need one. Now, I might be old school here because I still love to have a knee board. I still love to have a paper checklist, uh, one that's laminated preferably. I guess you could keep charts in there still too, but also your documents, right? Like your medical. Um, some people keep their pilot certificate here. I don't. But pens and paper and a knee board are something for me that are still a necessity. Now, the iPad is great. The iPad is predominantly the, the tool of choice in the, uh, in the front seats, but it really is something I think where a knee board can come in handy. Pens and paper can come in really handy. And that's not even just, just the flying part. That's when you're at the FBO or you're, you're traveling, you're copying something down. Pens and paper and a knee board, very critical. Extra batteries. Now, you don't want to carry too many of these and you don't want to carry stuff that you're not using. So if you only need a couple double A's or triple A's, then keep those. Just a spare, uh, a backup for each kind that you use. But also, obviously, the USB power bank. Now, if you're plugging in your iPad straight into the panel of your airplane or you're getting your power somehow through the airplane, that's fine. But always consider keeping a power bank like this to run your iPad if that's your sole source of charts and information and ADSB potentially, um, but also anything else that you have in your flight bag, like I said before, that's USB chargeable. This is a little bit heavier. This does take up a little bit more space, but I believe it is so critical when you need it to have this source of power as a back backup option. All right, let's move on to this, the multi-knife. I use a Swiss Army knife that literally looks just like that. I would say here, the more tools, the better. Uh, you understand that if it comes down to survival or landing in a spot where it's very remote and desolate and this is all you have, it's better than nothing. At the same respect, understand that this has limitations too. It's mostly for small things, but again, you just never know when you need something like this. I found myself even for routine and everyday things over the years, a lot of times pulling out um, the Swiss Army knife. It doesn't take up a lot of space in your bag. It's not too heavy, quite honestly. It can fit in your pocket too. I know a lot of people like that, but this is definitely something that lives in my flight bag. All right, we're getting to the last couple here. So this is kind of a luxury item here, the Century ADSB receiver by ForeFlight. Now, it's not just because it can receive ADSB. It can look for other traffic. I think that is a huge benefit. Mostly reliable, obviously, um, considering that most everybody now has that ADSB function transmitting in their airplanes, but also the CO2 monitor and another source of GPS for your airplane. And the fact that obviously I'm using four flight with this, you know, what's coming up next as my 10th and final item. Um, but the fact that this device alone can now also provide you an artificial horizon to go along with the moving map, to go along with weather information. You think about all that you spend in flying and renting a plane or fuel or insurance or hangering. I mean, this is a one-time purchase and investment that covers so many bases of safety and security and redundancy. I really like this Sentry from ForeFlight and, and the CO2 monitoring. I, I don't think I did that enough. How many people actually have a carbon monoxide detector in their plane or something that would let them know if that's a problem? Most don't. This adds that feature along with everything else. So it is easy to use. It's phenomenal. And last but certainly not least, something which when I started flying, this was a pipe dream. Four flight did not exist. The idea of something like that would seem far-fetched. But here we are in the 2020s, and this product has really come a long way in the last decade. There's the artificial horizon like I talked about, um, as well as the ability to overlay your current position on an approach plate uh, like this one for some airport garfield colorado it's pretty amazing it's pretty special and how they keep improving and updating for flight i i do have to say it's a great tool and it also is fantastic that if your ipad breaks and stops working you could plot your phone i guess and do a lot of the same things i'm not one to overly and completely rely on for flight but i have to tell you this is the last of my 10 items in the flight bag. It is definitely not the least. So there you go. 10 things in my flight bag. 
Let me know what kind of stuff you have in your flight bag. Did I miss something? Can you recommend something else? Put all of that in the comments section below.